Hey, Dirt Farmer Jay here from DirtFarmerJay.com. You've probably seen out in the tool stores both oil lubricated air compressors as well as oilless. Is there really a difference? Yeah, there is. Let me tell you all about it. Stay tuned. Hey, Dirt Farmer Jay here from DirtFarmerJay.com. Are you in the market for an air compressor? and you're trying to make a decision of whether to use an oil lubricated compressor like this uh, DeWalt unit or going with a oilless type of compressor. Now this is a little bit older one, but there are a lot of them out in the market now. You'll see them as can, uh, pancake compressors, smaller compressors, and they look pretty compelling. And the price point is very nice usually compared to a larger one. Uh, or with oil ones, but let's compare them side by side. So why are they oilless? Well, uh, one of the things they're trying to do is not have you have oil in a sump like here uh, that is out on the job side or can leak out or if the compressor ends up on its side or tilted over, uh, you don't have a problem with oil going where it shouldn't. Uh, that's certainly something that is a benefit. Um, the second thing is lubrication from these oilless type of compressors comes from Teflon coatings, uh, slippery surfaces, uh, areas that don't need to be lubricated, aren't bathed in oil, plastics, that sort of thing. So um, that's how they accomplish it. But there's some trade-offs. Number one, with that initial purchase price being lower, over the long haul, the oilless does not last as long, uh, at least in these types of units, uh, job site compressors, small shop areas, and that sort of thing. There's industrial units, that's a whole different game, so we're not covering that here. But these will not last as long as these for a couple reasons. One, temperatures are totally different, operating temperatures in uh, the compressor head itself. Secondly, oil itself acts as a coolant. It is actually pulling heat away from the head, bathing everything here, and then the fan is carrying it off. This is not as efficient because it's just um, depending entirely on air movement to remove it. The third trade-off is noise level. This unit runs substantially quieter than this unit. So I'm gonna put the shrouds back on this in a moment so we're comparing apples to apples on sound output and you'll be able to see on the dB meter the difference in sound level between this type of unit and this unit. But before we do that, I want you to take a close up where I'm going to hand rotate this so you can see the workings and then we're gonna turn it on also without the shrouds so you can see how this is working. And then we'll show you a diagram of this one over here just so you can kind of see the difference of how they're both accomplishing pressurization of air. So let's go ahead and take a close up of this unit. Okay, I'm gonna hand rotate the, uh, the fan unit here, which is kind of an unusual setup itself in that um, it, uh, just the way it's moving air is a little bit suspect. It, it, this is more like beating the air, but what's connected to it is the lower end of um, the counterweights on the crankshaft, the connecting rod to a little piston that's exposed in this sleeve. And you can hear this is oilless, but over time it clearly could use some lubrication. So you can see the workings of it as I rotate it by hand right there. Well, let's go ahead and turn it on and you'll see how fast it operates and therefore it's also going to generate higher levels of sound. Let's give it a shot. All right, let's turn her on, see what we get. Pretty darn noisy, what do you say? Another difference that is really apparent is just looking at how these operate. The oilless unit uses a single smaller piston, whereas a unit like this, this particular one has two pistons, as you can see in the diagram, and just the size of the two different heads is quite notable, uh, both on the intake and the uh, output side 
of how much work each stroke is having to do. Therefore, this one can run at a lower RPM, therefore reducing wear and tear on the mechanism and lowering the sound that it creates. All right, let's go ahead and take the sound output difference between this unit, the oiled unit, and the oilless. Okay, let's see what happens. <laughs> around 100 dB. Now let's go over and take a look at this one. So the bottom line is, if you have the budget and you're going to do some kind of air compressor system, that perhaps is in your garage or shop where mostly the unit is stationary or is set up to be stationary, I would definitely go the oil lubricated kind simply because it's gonna last longer, it's quieter. Uh, you can change out the oil on a regular basis at a good maintenance interval and just keep the equipment running a lot longer. Uh, the noise levels are significant. During the filming here, uh, Rob, who is behind the camera, and I attempted to have several conversations while we would run this and while we would run that. And you could see the dB levels, but the sound level from a perception size is notable. This, we're able to hold a, uh, a level of conversation about the same level I'm talking to you right now. Whereas over here, we were yelling at each other to make it clear over the top. So there is a notable difference. And if you want to be a bit more comfortable and safer in your shop, um, this is the way to go versus that one. We use this DeWalt compressor as the model for our discussion between the uh, comparison between the two types. But if you'd like to know more about this compressor, check out this video here where we did a product review on this and feature some of the things that are really cool on this. Take a look at it. And while you're at it, check out this other video that YouTube thinks is perfectly up your alley, your interest. Check it out, and we'd like it if you watch it too. Until the next time, this is Dirt Farmer Jay with DirtFarmerJay.com.